we go. Okay, I'd like to call the meeting to order of the City of Monona Community Media Committee, November 21st. You, uh, Will, you obviously have the role, you know who's here. Yep. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes from August 8th? So move. Do I have a second? A second. Can you hear me? A second from Dave. Okay, great. Uh, any corrections, changes, additions? No. Okay. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. Uh, any objections or abstentions? Hearing none, the minutes carry. Um, I don't think we have anybody here to make an appearance tonight, right? Correct. We do not. Okay. Um, don't have any ongoing business. And so we're to 6 1 new business referendum updates, department news. Yeah. So I, I'm assuming many of you heard the referendum did pass. So that means good things for the city all around. Uh, for our department in particular, um, not nothing uh, e extravagant that has changed, uh, and and really all departments, really nothing extreme has changed. Uh, just being able to not uh, be pinched, um, but it has passed, so that's good. Basically, uh, what thirty two votes. So we'll be thankful of the people who live and work in Monona because they probably took us over the edge. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I would just add that we just uh, we uh, just had the committees of the whole for the operating budget um, when each, each uh, department head, including Will, um, presents their budget. And, um, you know, I can say very confidently that prior to the referendum we had really cut all the budgets down to the bone on the operating side anyway i mean the staff has been very understanding um and received virtually no increases or one percent increase for like the last what three years four years um uh at a time when we've had inflation and um not to mention uh, no increases in their budgets because there really wasn't any more fat to cut. So not that we had fat to begin with. So it just really makes a difference in terms of us being able to take care of our staff because we all know um, how terrific they are and how expensive, frankly, it would be to replace them at a host of different levels. So, um and, and I, you know, I know I speak for the entire city council when I say, A, we're grateful that it passed, and B, um, this, committee, this community shouldn't in any way, shape, or form feel like that we felt like we got a blank check to have fun with. I mean, this was literally um, an absolute necessity just to keep services going the way they're going. So... All good things. Yep. Any uh, number two capital and operate? Does anybody have any questions about the budget or operating referendum? No, but I will add. Um, you know, we in fact, I, I was running from my um, the friends of the senior center, five hundred one C group. Um, we're very supportive of this referendum, understanding how this would affect them individually, but they were incredibly supportive. And it was really wonderful to be in that environment and have that kind of support. And you walk into the senior center and you, you know that other communities don't have these kind of things. Mm -hmm. And it is a place that people love to go. It's mm -hmm. just another example of the kinds of things that this city does for our community. Mm -hmm. Many thanks. Yeah, thank you. Um, number two, capital and operating budget updates. Yes, so the capital budget passed. Uh, however, 
the mayor did take out a couple studio cameras that were in there. Um, that was a $6,500 uh, cost. And she took those out. Um, and, and her reasoning was that it's a school, it will be on school grounds and something that only the school will be able to utilize in the, in the fashion that they'll be set up. So she thought that perhaps could be something we work out with the school district on how those get upgraded. So, um, most likely probably a school district, high school expense, but perhaps there's a way we partner down the road, but that was her thought there. Otherwise the other, the other items passed. So that's good. And, uh, the operating budget will hopefully be finalized at the December 2nd council meeting. Mm hmm I expect that as well. Great. Thank you. Um, yeah, I believe actually I asked the question about those cameras too, since the school uses them exclusively. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh number three, C uh six um three, um my Monona newsletter analytics review. Yeah, so I went, I started with the My Monona Analytics and the Monona Go app analytics, and then I went down a rabbit hole and kind of thought, well, why don't I <laughs> kind of juxtapose that with all the other uh, content areas that were a part of the website, the Facebook page, and YouTube. So I have a, a number of analytics to, to look over, and I didn't have time to put everything in one document, so I'm going to be jumping around. I'll share my screen. Uh I didn't get into depth with looking at these different um, different areas of different um, mediums and, and, you know, way deep into demographics and where they're coming from and who's watching what and how long and all that's there. But I'm, I'm not I didn't get into that for this. If there's anything people would like us to look at uh, or get information on when we're done, I could send you some stuff. <laughs> So let me start out here. I think if I do that. So if I do that, you can you should be able to see like everything on my screen, right? All these windows everywhere. Yep. Yep. Okay. So let's start off not with that. I'm going to go to the Word document, which is what I started doing. So if we look at the newsletter which is this one get can some, we um get some of this out of the way widen the screen a little bit yep and i will blow this up and let's see here great can everybody see that yep we can see it okay so uh basically what i did again is just kind of went against a year's worth, which is which is what Amanda has done in the past and what we've done in the past. And I think, you know, that was kind of her idea to kind of wait to go over these analytics until we've gone through a year so that we're kind of doing apples to apples, at least with the newsletter. And I think that makes a lot of sense. So if we look at uh, November 2023, and 2024, which I'm hoping you all see, you can you can tell that we've gone up a little bit in the number of sent items, which is essentially is the subscribers. So we have, you know, what, 100 and almost 110 more subscribers in a year. Our open rate has gone down a little and our click rate has gone down a little. But when you look at the national average that I put out there in 2024, the national average for open rate is 36 percent. So that means, you know, we are in 2023, we were double the national average. Uh, and in, in 2024, almost double. And same with the click rate. The click rate is uh, right there as far as two years in a row. But I mean, we're blowing that away with the national average. So to me, that's that's great. We the, our our audience that we're going for is engaged with what we're what we're giving them. And if you look at the stories, pretty similar. Development is always a big thing uh, with the newsletter. That's a big and, and and the way I got that information is we can tell what people are clicking on. 
And so they're clicking on the development plans for certain things. They're clicking on uh, last year when Pelletieri came and the new garbage recycling provider, uh, as well as the uh, joy cards for the senior center. And then another senior center uh, um, story, which I don't recall what it was. But that's interesting that the senior center is getting getting some love in the newsletter And of course, development's getting a lot of love. And in fact, the scholarly scoop in 2024 is all senior center related as well. So it's a newsletter, uh, interestingly, interestingly enough, seems to be development and senior center um, heavy, if you will. Of course, there was a lot of other stories that were in there, but, um, you know, the referendum didn't get a ton of clicks. It was not, you know, in the top five or six. So interesting in that respect. Any 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 questions about the newsletter or thoughts? Well, I just was looking at the Monona, the no November newsletter we just did, and I was seeing that both the referendum passing and the Mayor, Mayor O'Connor's announcement um, both didn't have links in them. So that may be why it was lower for November. Just the two main stories didn't have click off points. So that would probably drive that down because people read that and didn't click. <laughs> Right. There wasn't really anything to click on unless I, yeah, I could have copied that letter basically and just posted it on the website, which they would have just kind of went to the same exact letter they're reading. So, yeah, that kind of skews it a little bit. Which, good point, Amanda, right? We've talked about that in the past, like making sure there's something to click on in the stories. Otherwise, we have no clue if they actually are, who you know, engaging in a story because the only way we know is if they're clicking on something. Yeah, it's still interesting content, you know. I just kind of did a little uh, uh, back of the envelope math here, and it looks like uh, eleven oh two cent with a sixty nine percent open rate is about seven hundred and sixty people. Uh, nine hundred ninety six cent with a seventy six point two open rate is seven hundred and fifty nine people. So, in that sense, it looks like it. might be the same people uh more or less uh i i love the newsletter and i really applaud the changes that have happened over the last 12 months but finding ways that you know we can get those clicks uh sounds like a great thing moving forward as well but i, I just thought i'd pass along my quick math there no that's interesting that was, that's a good call i didn't even uh didn't even think of that that yeah there could be the same 750 people who are extremely engaged Well, and I, I wonder, too, um, if, because the number is so close in terms of the number sent, if there's potentially something else we might do to boost the number of people that have signed up for it. <laughs> well, I mean, I know that if you get the newsletter, it's, a, you know, but I, I mean, I'm wondering if we... did more PSAs on WMO or if there's a, a, some other cross marketing uh, 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 in other ways that we could to try to boost that number. Yeah, that absolutely. We we do not do a whole lot of cross promotion. I will occasionally put it in the community calendar for WVMO if the if the calendar is light on information or things going on. Um, the website now has a button at the home page that says newsletter on it, so it's a little bit easier to get to from the home page. Which That's then right. you click on the newsletter and you would go to the page where you could sign up if you wanted to. Mm -hmm. Um, But that's not directly soliciting people either. That's where they got to click on it to go. It's not um, not something they where we're saying sign up for the newsletter. Mm -hmm. So there's definitely more of a push we could do for solicitation to for more signups. Yeah, I agree. I wonder if And it would make since sense development to is such an interest uh, for folks, um, is is Doug or Thor g good about getting information uh, put Yeah. in the newsletter, or is that something that would be helpful for me to follow up on as chair of the development committee?
No, they they've actually do a really good job of keeping the web page updated, right? Which in turn, that's what we use, and and so they um, they will send us something, and and then just link to the to web page, and then the web page essentially really has the top development stories on it. At least that's what my understanding, what I've gathered. Um, Anita could maybe speak a little bit more of what exactly they're sending. And Amanda, maybe you can speak more of what you've been build, building over the year, but that's kind of what I've taken away. Are you there? Hello. <laughs> Did we lose some people? I. Uh... I don't know. Uh, it's a, uh, Amanda, are you there? Sorry to step away. I had a cat issue. I'm sorry if no, I missed something. No, no, no problem. problem. We're, We're having just... a kitchen remodel, so there's just chaos everywhere. <laughs> and Katie has her hand up. Okay. Katie can go first. Uh, I have a separate question about um, just growth of the newsletter, I guess, or comment. Um, if you want to have Amanda address that first, that's fine. Okay. So Amanda, I was just saying, uh, Nancy had asked uh, since development, such a big thing, if they were, if they were providing good content and, and being proactive essentially. And I said, it seemed like they were from my understanding, they seem to have content in there. The webpage seems to be updated. So they kind of keep us in the loop, but I had kind of punted it to you and, and Anita because you were kind of the flow of information. Yep. Most months they do provide a few of those like plans, like where we actually can call out like this month, it was top golf and a few other ones. I would say sometimes there are months that it's just, we have like a generic, like keep up to date on development plans. And that's like the template yep. um, that does happen every once in a while. But I would say almost every month we have like something about that we link to of a plan going in. Great. Great. Yeah. I mean, we don't always have a, a, you know, big development or even a small development in front of plan. Sometimes it's just sign approvals or zoning related stuff. That's not uh, uh, rather than something that might be under consideration for construction, but that's good to hear that um, Doug and Thor are good about updating the website and getting information to you. Yeah. It seems to be going well. Yeah. So now Katie. Yeah, I I was just having similar thoughts, I think, as to what was brought up to about just growing the newsletter list yeah. a little bit. Um, and I I think it might be helpful. I think we use constant contact. Is that right for this? Yeah. Yeah. I don't I don't know that constant contact gives demographic data for users, right? Unless they like sign up and have a unless they create their own um, like user ID, I think in there. Um, so I wonder if a like survey monkey survey linked in there where people could fill out, like, just tell us a little bit about yourself because I don't, if this, if the senior center is, I mean, truly surprisingly, right. Like they have a print newsletter. I don't think they have an e-newsletter. Um, if those stories are getting a lot of, of traction, I wonder if the, a fair number of our subscribers are, um, seniors or leaning that way. And so demographic data of current subscribers might just give us a better idea of like where to go to get growth, right? Like, yeah. are there a lot of like 30 somethings? If not, maybe we can partner with schools to get some more um, visibility on that newsletter. Do you know what I mean? Like to, we have to know who we have now before we could grow to know where, where we're going to get growth. Um, and I don't think constant contact, but maybe Amanda, you're in there way more often than I, I don't use it regularly to know if they have demo I would, data. I would think off the free version we're on, or I don't know yeah. about a free version, but I would think we don't have the kind that has more in analytics. Yeah. Um, well, so, I mean, a self a survey would be self-selecting, right? Of course, like we're just going to probably get that 20% or um, 13%, depending on the open rate or click through rate of people who might choose to to let us know um but instead of just sort of doing like a completely generic 
like throw everything at the, throw all the spaghetti at the wall, a, a survey of who our demographics are now might help us just target in a little bit on the demographics that we are missing. Because I also just pulled up the Dane County election results because we know Monona had a huge, incredible mm -hmm. voter turnout and it was 5,600 people, right? So like there's, there's plenty of people who are adults in this community who aren't, um, who aren't getting this information. Right. You and know. they're clearly engaged enough that they're voting and getting exactly out things are important. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, 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 and unfortunately, I, you know, Nancy knows this, they're engaging on social media. We see them on Facebook, we see them on next door and that's not factual, right? Like they're getting, now they're getting information from um, non-expert sources and Nancy and other council members are spending their time trying to refute some of this information. So I just want, I just want, it's just a wondering, I don't know. I'm not sure how useful it would be. It would depend on how many people participate. Well, that made me think right away, the next newsletter, we could put a survey monkey link in there. Yeah, and, that's yes. Right. A hundred percent. That's where I would do it. Yeah. And, and see what we get. Yeah. Just, and just try it. And then we, we could also, uh, yeah, I don't know if it could cross-reference to the website, if we would be able to put it there to try to get people who have signed up or who, who if they're going to sign up, could you fill out this survey as well? I don't know if we'd get accurate data that way, but. The other thing that occurs to me in terms of trying to <clears throat> boost um, the number of people that we're sending to is, um, aside from the mention of the PSAs on VMO, um, uh, then I'm wondering if, um, <clears throat> since social media was just mentioned, if um, we did a post or two or three on Facebook, either on the city's Facebook page or if community media has their own, well, of course, you know, VMO does. I don't know if, does community media have its own Facebook page? Yes. So, uh, so you know, putting something there. And then the other thing, this might be a long shot, but, um, you know, we're going to be sending out the tax bills. Well, there's two things. But the tax bill makes more more sense to me. Um, you know, that's something that goes to every single residence, um, owned owned residence. So, um, it might be that there could be a little insert or something in, the, or a little box at the bottom of the tax information or something. And again, that's kind of a long shot because we usually have a lot to say in that, and we. Uh, obviously any kind of tax info takes priority, but, you know, maybe there's something there that simply says something like, you know, we want you to stay informed or, right, you know, something like that, you know, uh, go here to sign up for the city newsletter. I don't know. Something that gets to all the households is my thinking. Same with yeah. the water bill too. I think the website is on the, our water bills right now. Yeah, so I don't yeah, know if it's the newsletter that's the other or just thing that I was going to say is yeah. the water bill does have yeah. room to put a little message. So the water bill does or doesn't? It does. Okay, I, I thought I thought we did that a while ago. Yeah, okay. I think yeah, I think it just pushes to the website, but I'm not sure. I don't have one. Apparently, mine is paid right now, so I can check the next one. Yeah, yeah, I, I mean, it's, you know, it's at the bottom of a, of the water bills, and it, it's you can't be very long, but there is a space to be able to put little messages there. Well, and I think about the senior center, and um, we again we get the newsletter and paper, but um, there's there's got to be a contact list. So, for instance, Katie. Couldn't we put a link to the Monona um, newsletter, City of Monona newsletter, in the um, yeah. newsletters to each of the schools, particularly Winnequa? Maybe not the other schools, but particularly Winnequa, the Winnequa newsletter. 
so that people would see that because often in a in a in that electronic format you already have somebody in there there's a link in there they might just click on it and look at it i mean i'm just looking for ways to expand into the school district setting Yeah, I think I guess that's where my question about just like who are our demographics already so that we would know like, yeah, we're missing young parents or we're missing, um, you know, because I don't know, maybe it's all parents who are trying to get all the information they need and we're missing, um, you know, people in households without children. It's just hard to know without without knowing who already is subscribed. Um, but yeah, that would that would help us sort of target where where we would want to see growth or where we want to try and get um you know marketing essentially right. yeah and also how we order the newsletter we may change that based on yeah. if we find out one audience is using the newsletter either for like we usually put the development updates right now towards the bottom of the newsletter to get people to read the whole thing but um like we might change the order if we actually knew who was reading it to give them a better experience. Right. Okay, great. Um, Will, do you want to go to Monona Go Analytics or Facebook Analytics? Yeah, yeah, we'll go to Facebook. And I I took those notes. Those are good ideas. I'll talk about the, um, I will look into the tax, the tax info and see if it's not too late to add something or where that goes. Okay, so Facebook uh, so some some real basic information. Interesting, the majority of our followers on the City of Monona Facebook page are active around 3 p.m. on Thursday. That's the most active time. And it, we are, are heavily uh, engaged with women on the site um, all across the board. And then men have a little bit of a segment there between those two age groups. And it falls off fairly dramatic on each end of the spectrum over 55 and under 35, essentially. And what over the last, so the last year, I'll just keep going and then we can talk about it. Essentially, the, the community festival stories were, were the top. And um, then it goes to Parks and Rec and the, Monon the Memorial Day Parade and the Harry Whitehorse National Night Out. And the referendum didn't even make it until 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That's the 10th highest story of the year. And everything else above it had more clicks, if you will. So I, I don't know how much of that says in a sense other than, you know, um, women are more engaged. And it seems that stories about um, things that are happening in Monona seem to be a little more intriguing than information about Monona, though. It's not totally apples to apples with the newsletter because a newsletter only comes out once a month and Facebook's obviously every day and we don't put development stuff on Facebook. So even if we did, even if we wanted to compare those, we couldn't because there's not even there's not even development info on Facebook to compare it to. And Senior well, Center, that Senior that Center has their own though, Because we, I know that the now that the city of Monona itself broadly has a Facebook page, I think most, you know, the development stuff would be make more sense to have it there than community media page anyway. Yeah. Um, and I know that's always a little sensitive, you know, and when, when do you get it out? When do you talk about it as opposed to, um, cause then you, again, you can get people, talking about things that might not be factual about it. So I know um, Doug's even very cautious about what <laughs> what he talks about in staff meetings because, I mean, as you know, Nancy, these uh, development deals are uh, always in closed session and meetings with lawyers and 
things aren't final until they're final type of thing. Right. <laughs> so I think that's the tough part about the development. But like something like um, um, the golf, I should know what, Top Golf, that's something Yeah. we put out there now that's widely known and, and has moved past a stage that seems comfortable. Yeah, well, there's there's just multiple parts to the process. I mean, all of this, the plan commission never goes into plan goes into closed session um, because we're not dealing with the finances and all of that. We're just dealing with approval of developments and trying to make the development as best it can be for Monona and for the longer term. <clears throat> um, and <clears throat> and so you know, saying in a newsletter that a particular proposal has been approved by the plan commission is one step and then it gets approved by the city council which is another step and then the part that tends to be behind closed doors is actually the financing piece of it um you know so because it's really complicated stuff uh and uh obviously dealing with finances is a Um, a challenging thing too. So, uh, so there, de there are definitely things that, w you know, we could be saying about developments in terms of it being approved at plan or approved at the city council. And then of course there's layers when somebody comes forward, they might be coming forward initially for what's called a pre-hearing conference. And then they come forward again just to get general feedback and then and then and if the you know plan commission generally is favorable they come back for usually with a general development plan and then they come back again with a precise implementation plan so it's a it's a you know we can be working on a development over a two-year period Right. But but to your point, that did make me think while you were talking that we could certainly provide the same link we provide on the newsletter to the website and say, That's right. for development updates, go, you know, click here and have that on the Facebook page and um, just see what kind of traction that gets. Right. Uh, interestingly enough, there's about as many followers on our Facebook page as there are newsletter subscribers because it's a new Facebook page and... Um, So we're still trying to get get subscribers that way as well on the Facebook page. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when I see this top this list of top stories, like it just makes me think that people very like like the events function on Facebook. And that's what we're using it for like is the Memorial Day parade rained out or you know, like the live updates, the live information that comes from an event posting on Facebook. Yeah. And and more community stuff too, right? Like not not necessarily news items. Yeah. Uh, but just more community stuff. Right. Yeah, I I would agree. And it, it makes and and that also ties to the Thursday at 3 p.m. too, right? <laughs> like, what am I doing for the weekend? <laughs> right? What's Yeah. going on in Monona this weekend, right? Or next week, or you know, um yeah. Different Well, I'm focus. sorry, could, could you scroll back up to the um, demo demographics? So just curious, I'm just wondering about the 19% um, there, if some of those, I think you and Nancy were talking a little bit about like sports, MG sports being pretty popular. Like, I wonder, we don't really post any of that stuff on, you don't really post any of that st those stuff, those things on community media, though. I'm just wondering if that 19% might be parents, but maybe not. Yeah, well, in this in this being just the city site, I don't even uh, the city Facebook page. I don't even Right. post anything necessarily. I mean, I just recently did because essentially Monona Community Media City Department was at a a, a um, middle school fair, um, but usually I don't Oh yes, post I stuff saw that. about the school. I'll put that on the community media Facebook page. Oh, I'm sorry. So this is the city city's Facebook page. Correct. Oh, sorry. Okay, got it. Which now I'm like, oh, yeah, I should have got analytics for the community media page and the WVMO page. But um, I, I felt this was maybe a little with all the other data I was getting this Facebook page, I think, correlates a little more with the newsletter, with the website. Uh, 
and, and yeah. maybe with what people are watching on Monona Go and YouTube. Um, but, you know, if we wanted to go through all the Facebook page analytics sometime, we could do that just, just to see. Um, but they're all vastly different. Uh, Monona Community Media, as you said, Katie, I, w I would bet is very much parents um, and grandparents that are getting informed about their kids or grandkids. And their involvement. Yep, I agree. Yeah. And, and WVMO is, I mean... That's yeah. not even a Monona thing, quite frankly. I would be willing to bet there is far more East Side Madison subscribers on that Facebook page than there are Monona subscribers. Yeah, me too. Okay, great. Okay, so let's move to... Monona Go? Yeah, what is... Uh, actually, let's stay with the website. And this is a quick one. Uh, because I don't have a whole lot, but here is where people are going on our website. Obviously, the can you see this? Is it? I need to yeah. zoom. Okay, I can zoom in a little more if you want. Um, but obviously, this is number one being the website, so the front page. Yeah. But you can see that Parks and Rec and the library. And the search portion are really the top ones that, again, people are going to. Uh, WVMO does make it there on number 12. And this, again, is like November 20th, 2023 to November 20th, 2024. So, again, kind of that year frame. So, interestingly enough, development doesn't show up. If I keep scrolling, doesn't really show up until 26, way down here. Mm -hmm. So not a direct correlation. The newsletter is serving a different purpose in a sense. If that's the right analogy. Um, which, which makes sense. There, people are using different different app different uh what do i want to say different um assets for for different information we we wanted to look uh leah and i were looking to see if we could find what exactly people were searching for on the page uh, and she said she had found it before, but uh, Google Analytics always kind of changes its format like everything with updates. So we weren't able to find it. Um, but excuse me, Google Analytics is quite the quite the beast. So this is pretty generic, but just just to look at any thoughts. Oops. OK. Right. I'll Thank move on. You. So let me get into I believe this is where I'm gonna wanna go. Um actually. So here is our Monona Go information. So you're gonna see a viewer count, and this is over a year span. And these are all the viewers over the year on specific videos. Monona Live is what is always streaming on the Monona Go app. So over the year, there's been 998 people who have viewed the live link or the live portion of the app. And then Connectados had the next number of views and, and so forth. You can, you can see what I'm impressed by is as you look down there, it's a little bit off and on. You get uh, a high school activity and then a city activity and then a high school activity and then a city activity and then Eco Action Tuesdays and then graduation and then Connectados again. So um, a little uh, promising that we're not just getting uh, high schoolers or parents who are trying to watch the football game on the app or seem to be getting maybe some different um reasons why they're why they're tuning in obviously the viewership's low um especially if i uh compare that to i'm going to jump over 
hopefully I didn't. Uh, yeah. So if I jump over to the Google analytics, here's where I was talking about before some people showed up. The 2018 wife carry, just in the last year, you can see November 20th to November 20th, has the most views. So people have gone on our site to look at the wife carry. more than anything else A wife carry from the from <laughs> the uh, two thousand eighteen. yes i mean maybe it was our best coverage i didn't go back and look probably was i mean that was that was um that was when i think we had we had a pretty good av crew so i think we probably i wouldn't doubt if we had like three cameras there and a bunch of audio set up and it was probably a pretty elaborate setup because we had the crew Um, but I, yeah, I, I don't know why that is the case. I, one thing I did do, cause I'm like 11,000, maybe they're just counting all the views in, in this data set isn't, isn't actually right. And then what I found out and then I went to it, although I can't just let me go. Oh boy. All I want to do is open in a new window, but it won't. Well, let me do that. All right. So anyway. Oh, because I can't do it from here. All right. I won't waste your time. But when I opened it up, it was actually like 50,000 views. If you click, if you open that video again and hit traffic source, it might give you, like when it, when you have the wife carry up, Yeah, let me... it might, it might tell you more about where they're coming from. Where did I? Come on now. How did I? Traffic source. There we go. Oh, there we go. Oh no, it's just the image. Okay. I feel like someone's someone has you linked on a website that's getting a lot of clicks or something Yeah. like that. Yeah, I'm like, oh, here we go. There, it's finally giving me what I wanted. So, yeah, 51,000 views over the course of six years. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, friends and neighbors, gather around. So we had um I forget his name, but from iHeartRadio they had they had a good announcer and twenty twenty two now that I think about it, I think was Peter from The Bachelor. I thought it Oh was God, I'm not gonna Um so maybe that's why there's some views because Peter was the uh we had a bachelor who lives in uh, Madison. Right. Brian Bowers, I can't figure out. I don't know how he gets 3,700 views in a year, but that was somebody that Lindsey Wood Davis brought in because he was going to a show, well, back in 2018, he was traveling to some show and wherever and coming through and going to stay at Lindsey's house. So he set up a concert in the library for him. And that thing has been... Uh, top views ever since we did it. And then football kind of takes over for a while, as you might expect. Um, all right, stop it now. Let me scroll. Um, so, yeah, so then it's mostly high school stuff. Monona Grove... football games, stuff like that. And and I guess what, what I wanted to show originally, uh, apologies, is you'll see the views are in the thousands, whereas our Monona Go is, is in the double digits. Right. So 
And we don't know how many, uh, do, do we know when somebody downloads the Monona Go app? Do we know how many people have actually downloaded the app? No, but I can find that information. I have to email the company and say, can you tell me? Because we, we don't have that, but they will. At least they have in the past. Um, so I can do that. Well, Well, I, you know, I mean, I guess. no, I think it's good to know. I agree. I well, I I mean, I would be. Uh, I mean, I think that the, <clears throat> you know, it seems like a lot of the things that we we're talking about. Uh, for trying to boost newsletter interest uh, or number of subscribers to the newsletter would also apply to Monona Go, which is to say, you know, maybe there's some PSAs or some cross-marketing or, um, the you know, schools newsletters or, or other things that we could do to boost if... Yeah. You know, if that's if that's of interest, you know, um, Well, it's a, you know, it's a $2,500 uh, cost each year to continue the subscription to the service that provides us this uh, app. mm -hmm. So, I mean, there is a cost to it. So there, I think there's some, uh, certainly some uh, warrants, some effort. I guess, uh, to, to continue to try to get more subscribers, uh, more people to download the app. And, and, you know, I, I also look at it as it's not, uh, it, it probably will never be something like a YouTube for us because YouTube is just too big and too, too much money, too much there people. It's just a household name now. I mean, it's the second YouTube is also the second biggest browser The second most place people go to browse the internet to find things out. Google's number one, YouTube's number two. So it's pretty hard to compete with that when people are going there no matter what. So, so the way I look at it is that this is the, the app is just another touch point for us, another way that we can say we're, we're reaching out, we're trying to give you uh, ease of use to find information. Mm hmm And and perhaps as uh, as people move about their life, as that change, which it will, and and AI comes into play and everything else, perhaps more people will be using their phones or you know using uh, apps to view more than they do now, which you know probably will happen, especially as Monona turns uh, kind of turns over to a younger uh, demographic. Okay, thank you. But I got Thank some you. really good good notes here, so thank you. I will, I'm going to look into a number of these things. Anything Yeah. else under new business uh, and related to all these analytics before we move on to reports? Uh, I guess I just have a request. Um, I don't want to necessarily talk about it right now since we're bumping up on six, but um, I, I guess I would like to have a conversation about Um, the efficacy of Monona Go. And I, I feel like as a committee and and our previous chair, you know, we weren't sure how it was going to go. And $2,500 in the grand scheme of the city budget isn't a lot. Um, but I, I guess I'd just like to request it on a future agenda to talk about um, it, it is it, it it is worth an effort if we're paying for it and whether or not Um, we continue to see value in putting forth that effort. To Will's point, YouTube is a behemoth, and I don't know that we can beat it. And all it does is shortcut you to YouTube. That's that's my my request, I guess, would be for a future agenda item. I think that's great. Katie, thank you. I think we could add it to a future agenda. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I think we, <clears throat> it's one of those things where we either have to put more effort into boosting it or decide we're not going to, in which case then decide whether the $2,500 is worth it, right? Right. And
And I th and I have to make sure I know it's a full twenty five hundred because we're actually using some of the service to, for our streaming platform to be able to stream from different locations. But either way, there's there's a cost to it for sure, and yeah. And and if that's the case too, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't advocate for getting rid of it if it was a tool that you're using for something else. Then I would just say like, if that's the case, maybe we just cut ties to the analytics of it, and like that's great, but we don't need to feed effort into the analytics of like growing that platform. But we can talk about it in the future. Right, We and need and it's we have definitely it. part of that twenty five hundred. It's not the full Okay. twenty five hundred, um, Okay. but but it's probably uh, it, it's a good chunk because uh, we pay for for streaming it for having our channel on the not only Monona Go app but Apple TV, Roku, Amazon TV Fire Stick. Yeah. So if we decided that we didn't we didn't need all those and we just do the app. then okay then we just do the app or we say we don't need the app or you know i that's Yeah. something to discuss too like is any how many people are using the amazon fire stick do we not even need that and that would save money how many you know Well, and I, I think to your point, right? Like I have Apple TV, my kids watch YouTube all the time. And they just go to search and find the things that they want to watch, including Monona to Grow Football, right? So like, I, right that's, that's what I'm saying, I guess, like, it's a shortcut. Yeah. But if people are already using YouTube, is it, is it providing us any value? If it's a tool that's providing us value in other ways, I'm, I'm wouldn't advocate for ending it again, $2,500 as part of the overall budget. It, it's not a lot. But it Um, could I just be want utilized to make sure that for we're other putting things. effort in. Yeah, I just want to make sure that the effort is going in to where where it should, um, given the number of directions that you and Brennan are pulled on a hourly basis. Right. <laughs> yeah. No, I agree. It, and it's certainly something, right, like you mentioned, it, we, we started it to see where it would go, to see what kind of traction we get. Um It deserves a little effort, but it's also now we're seeing we're seeing that it's it's not gravitate. You know, people aren't gravitating towards it, um, but it's there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, shall we move on? We good? Yep. Okay, Katie. Uh, I'm moving on to reports. WVMO. Uh, let's see. Oh, it looks like, did Joe step out? Okay, Joe stepped out. He's always my go-to because he's pretty much in the station all the time. We're doing pretty well at WVMO. I had a meeting with the friends group just to, to be a part of that. Um, and we talked about uh, we're doing some underwriting and sponsorship. And I should say Joe's doing a lot of sponsorship uh, connections with local promoters here in Madison. Uh, with local music shows, with bands that the artists that we play on the radio. So he's been doing a really good job, job getting some connections there. And so the sponsorships, uh, which is basically just um, helping to to get out announcements about local shows through these um, connections with the promoters. He's he's brought in uh, about six thousand dollars in sponsorships through the radio. So so that's good. Some of the friends. Um, Stacy Harbaugh is working on kind of a menu, if you will, for underwriting so that people can kind of sign up for levels of underwriting and what they what they essentially would get for underwriting. So they're moving forward on that. And I met to kind of uh, not to kind of, but to to, to work on a mutual uh, memorandum of understanding that um, this type of income would then come to the city at the end of the year. Um, the the Watt adoptions and any fundraising they do outside of that uh, certainly uh, is friends oriented, but uh, the underwriting and the sponsorship and the the work we're doing to get it on the air and to program these things uh, certainly takes a little bit of time, and we'd need that money to come back to the city for operations expenses. So we're working on that together. Uh, other than that, uh, WVMO is going great. Um, We were awarded the local radio station of the year by the Madison Music Association uh, or Madison Area Music Association, the Mamas. So that's great. That's always a good a good thing to to know, especially that we don't enter it per se. People vote for us. So that's good. Um, 
and and the uh, you know I think the volunteers and the programs are are going well. Will, um, this is Dave. Could you just go over the demographics and the ratings for Under the Covers with Dave on Tuesday nights at 7 o'clock? <laughs> well, let Thank me you. see here. You know, <laughs> oh, you know what? Everything has been covered. It's all under the covers. It's not available. Oh, oh, I see. It's got to be in the millions, though, I would think. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, next would be, yeah, committee ideas discussion. I think, um, at least from a department with the referendum passing and and with working uh, on those things, uh, where now we now we can push forward on some some new objectives. I know one thing we'll be looking into talking about the newsletter is whether or not it makes sense to move to the uh, newsletter that is connected to the website. And that will allow us to have a number of members, such as a number of city staff, can then create newsletters for their own department or whatever, and uh, mostly uh, beneficial for Parks and Rec, uh, because then they can have other staff members create newsletters and uh, It'll be very helpful in the prices is, is, is similar. Uh, we can sign, we can have as many users as we want and it all kind of generates through the website. Um, but we need to investigate that a little bit and see if that's actually uh, a good thing and, and, and would benefit everybody involved. And, and I say it would benefit the Parks and Rec because they're the only ones who send out newsletters. Um, the library does. So perhaps they, they have their own newsletter as well. So perhaps it would benefit the library as well. Um, but really the library, Parks and Rec, and us are really the only ones from the city departments that send out. Well, us, meaning this department sends out the city's official newsletter. But we're, that's it. Other, other departments do not. You know, the police, fire, uh, senior center, planning. They don't do news. They don't in public works. There's no newsletters specific. Right. So that would be what I have. I also, I guess, for me, I w was um, thinking of and, and talked with some uh, with Neil and and Nancy about, you know, instead of canceling, you know, two three meetings in a row because we don't have specific agenda items, really going to a me have meetings when needed. And and that can be um, committee members emailing saying, hey, I'd like to talk about this or work on this. And then we get some agenda items and then we can get a meeting going. Um, but a lot of times I don't have specific things that um, people that we would need to meet and act on. We're also involved with the department already um, between Anita and Amanda doing the newsletter. Dave's on the Friends of WVMO and a programmer. Uh, and Katie's uh, with the school district and Susan, you're always such a, uh, uh, you're always out waving the flag for us. Um, and Bill's writing content for us, uh, and doing his lake, uh, lake loop. So segment. So that's my thought. That's the thought so that we don't have to have people on the edge each month wondering if we're having a meeting or not. Well, I, I just want to comment on that. And, you, and again, I think it's good for the committee to think about it. But, um, and Katie can speak to this as well. Um, I I think it's helpful to have it scheduled and have you cancel it rather than to not have it scheduled. Yeah. So something that's really started causing us some difficulties is um, we went to once a month. And there's several times we need as a board to get together and work on a project. So then you have to go to seven people who are, plus the staff who are working all over the place in different jobs and try and find a date when you can meet. Um, and Katie, do you, do you have any thoughts about that? Because I know um, it's, it's often difficult 
so we've been trying to do every other meeting out in um, Cottage Grove, like we had done before. And part of the reason is apparently the, we aren't set up to live stream out of the school buildings. So we have to do the meeting in the village hall. And we can only do that on Tuesday and Thursday nights. We always meet on Wednesday nights. Trying to make that transition has been pretty impossible because we have people who work Tuesday and Thursday nights. So it's up to you. Again, Katie, do you have a thought about that? that that's some good, good feedback. Thanks. Yeah, even if we started with like every other month, having that on the calendar, I'd yeah. be okay with. But I, I agree that at least having it carved out on the calendar is a lot easier for um, me and then just say like, okay, you know, a week in advance or whatever, we don't, we don't need the time. I, I agree. Yeah. I think the way most um, there, there are, I would guess half or maybe even more than half of the city committees um, have meetings on, only on an as needed basis, but it's still scheduled for the same time every month. Oh, okay. So um it could be every other month, but the whole point is it would be, you know, the second Thursday or the third, you know, uh, of every month um, on an as needed basis. And then that way people have it in their calendars. And then the trick would be to let people know it's not happening far enough in advance so that you're not holding out your precious evening, early evening um, for too long before you know whether it's yay or nay, right? So, like, even tonight, to change it to this meeting, um, we do our uh, Friends of the Senior Center meeting every third um, Thursday at 4 o'clock. Right. And these guys were still going, you know. Right. So, it, it's understanding you may have to change it, but it's a, people will feel more positively if you cancel than if you try and schedule it as a No, group. that's a good point. Oh, yeah. Keeping it on the schedule is a lot easier than trying to schedule it. Yeah. And I think people will feel better about the committee saying, I know when they're supposed to meet, but we don't always have to. That's great. Versus, oh, I was always trying to schedule and I have to work and, you know, or I have the kids at night or just, yeah. just the thought. Yeah. Yeah. And that's fine. That's great. I wanted to bring it up for discussion, and I think those are really good points. Anyone else have thoughts? My thoughts would be the same as, I mean, what what Susan and, and Katie said, that keep it on the calendar. I mean, I'd be fine going down to, to buy monthly on the calendar, too, if that makes more sense, but keep it on and just cancel it. Okay. Yeah. And I will, I will try to do, uh, uh, if we don't meet, I will try to yeah get that out earlier than later because I think that was my biggest thing is I didn't want it to be where everyone, you know, on Tuesday found out, oh, now my night's free on Thursday. I wish I'd have known that on Monday when I was planning my week type of thing. <clears throat> right. And I think generally, Susan, to your point, I think generally we want to stick with whatever the, if it's the second Thursday of the month in this, in this particular case the reason why we're meeting this week is because um will and i had budget meetings <laughs> last week uh that we couldn't skip and uh and so we had to be able to clear our calendars for that but you know but but the you know shifting to a different date or a different time in a given month should be kind of a last resort and hopefully if we're not expecting a meeting every month or we're, um, you know, that we'll be able to stick to, um, or if we go every other month, we'll be able to stick to whatever date is that, you know, is on the calendar. Well, something else you could do would be just like the week, the Thursday before send an email to everyone saying calling for agenda items. And then if no one else has anything and you don't have anything, you could cancel at that time. Right. Yeah. I'll start. I like that idea. And if people are, are, are good with that, I'll start doing that. I'll start sending out, you know, um, earlier in the week before 
asking for some some insight on what people would like to to talk about or have some ideas they want to come out with what have you and if nobody responds then um you know that thursday or or friday i'll i'll or you know the week prior i'll let people know that since there's no agenda items we won't have a meeting Right, unless it's pre unless it's pressing too, it might be something where somebody would say, "I have something I want to talk about, but I don't need to talk about it this month. I can wait until next month." You know, um, right. And they'll obviously be, you know, like four months in a row, July, August, September, October, for the most part, that we'll have to meet just because of budgets and everything. So there will certainly be a chunk of months. Fantastic. Anything else? All right. Then that being the case, uh, thank you all again uh, for your service to this com um, committee in, um, in New York. I know that this is a committee that rolls up their sleeves, so um, I, I really appreciate that. Um, and with that, I will be delighted to take uh, a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Great. All those in favor. Aye. 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 We are adjourned. Well, Thank thanks, you. Ian. Yeah, thanks, Thank everybody. Thank you so very much. Bye. Bye-bye.